what do you think about the paid ads on you know, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube? They, they charge you and they run it for a, a mm -hmm. select number of people and such for a set number of money for a set number of days. What do you think about those? Are they effective or just a waste of your money? I think paid advertisements are definitely um, really effective. And I always say like every marketing method works, but there's always a right time for everything. Hello and welcome. I am Coach Castle, a certified biomechanics expert, nutritionist, and efficiency coach. Subscribe to this channel to learn the most efficient ways to maximize your muscle growth and recovery, enhance your body, and advance your mind, all using the latest science. Welcome to Castle's Corner. Hello and welcome to Castle's Corner. I am Coach Castle, joined today by our guest, Diego Jaggi. Uh, he is a marketing expert. I'll let him go ahead and introduce himself and everything he does. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get into how to market your business online, as well as how to build and nurture an audience. So, uh, Diego, if you don't mind. Castle, yeah, so, well, first of all, thanks for having me here. I mean, um, it's uh, great to be here and I'm really excited for today's call. <laughs> It'll be fun. Um, Yes, I mean, uh, my name is Diego Jaggi, as Castle uh, just mentioned, um, I'm actually a business coach. So I've been in the online space for three and three almost and a half um, years. And I essentially um, help experts to start and to grow their expert based business um, in terms of coaching um, and looking particularly at three key pillars and um, it's great that we connected and since you guys are also in the internet marketing space i think we're gonna have you know a lot of valuable uh, topics to cover today oh, i have so many of my clients i mean they have businesses multiple businesses they're entrepreneurs starting businesses and internet marketing is, is basically everything nowadays outside of word of mouth so uh, why, why don't we get into how would you like what are the three pillars you mentioned 100%. Um, so, you know, in my case, I always help my clients with three key things, and that is one offer creation. Um, that's essentially the starting point to everything that you do with your business, right? So um, everything that has to do about creating your irresistible, um, solid offer that you can sell on a high ticket level um, for your expertise. Now what would the you second thing as, as a high ticket, real quick, just for people who aren't unsure what a high ticket would be. Yes, so high ticket is essentially you know any type of product that you can sell at a larger scale, um, and there's different ranges. Uh, for you know, for me, I typically consider something to be a high ticket that is one thousand dollars and plus. Now this can apply to you whether you're selling physical products, um, perhaps you're offering a service, perhaps you're doing some consulting. Um, no matter what type of product or service you're offering, a high ticket would be a product pr priced at $1,000 or plus. Um, again, typically I see this ranging between two to $5,000, but it can be from $1,000 to $10,000, even to people who kind of package up their expertise to something worth 20 or more. Makes sense. So uh, go ahead and get back to actually developing your offer for the, the high ticket. Yeah. Um, so obviously there's a lot that goes into the offer creation side of things. Um, you want to look at exactly how you can package together your most, um, like, like the biggest bits of your expertise that you can then leverage in the market and be able to, you know, solve the biggest problem, because when you're solving big problems in the market, obviously you can charge much more for, um, your expertise and for what you're actually doing for your clients. So that is one of the key things that you want to look at. Then you also have other segments that go into it, um, which include the way you position yourself in the market, the type of messaging that you, you know, put in place to come across to people so that they can understand um, what your offer is about, um, the way you structure your high ticket offer. There's a lot of bits that, um, you know, really make up the foundation to your internet based business. So it seems like it would be very individual to the market, the person marketing it, the packaging that they're bringing to it. it would be very individual. But the, the general premise is you have something that people need. It is a good service and you can hard charge a high value for it. Right. hundred um, percent. I would say I would say probably the one thing that is the most important and that will apply to everybody, no matter you know, whether you sell a physical product or a service is the problem that you're solving in the market. 
So um, always putting a lot of attention on, you know, the problem that you're solving for your clients will be a big determinant of what you can charge for what you do or for your product. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're in, you know, in whatever niche that you're in, there will always be a big problem in your specific segment um, that you can tackle and that you can look at to essentially solve. I mean, it makes sense. The world is nothing but problems. Leave, leave something alone for a couple of months and see what happens. It'll be riddled with problems. <laughs> I mean, in every field you can imagine. Leave, leave your house alone for a year and come back to it. You're going to need every uh, plumber, electrician, <laughs> construction worker you can find. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so that would be the first pillar. It would be, I guess, again, just to summarize, developing your high ticket offer through what you offer, finding a problem, basically, and a solution mm -hmm. to it that people desire. And then, then what would the second pillar be? So the second foundation and um, probably one of the things that everybody is also excited for is the marketing side of things. Um, and that is essentially figuring out a system that you can leverage to build your own audience and then leverage your audience to you know, get more clients for your high ticket business. Um, again, whether you're selling physical products or you're, you're selling service or consultation is kind of dialing in the marketing side of things so that you always have a predictable pipeline of prospects who are qualified, um, just ready to, you know, see what are their, you know, a good fit to actually work with you. So it seems as if it uh, more like a funnel, are you talking about kind of a funnel marketing strategy where you, you weed out the people who wouldn't work for the high value, uh, the high ticket value? Um, I mean, you, you can look at it in terms of a funnel, um, but the principles that, you know, we like to focus at earn, like earn more impact more, which is actually the name of my company. I forgot to mention that um, is really building an audience through putting yourself out there. Obviously there's tons of different ways for which you can um, market online, but the, you know, the key idea behind it is that you're present on one platform and you're able to build your own audience so that you don't have to go really chasing people. You don't have to do cold outreach. You don't have to do, um, you're essentially kind of switching the side of marketing to a point where you can put out content and you can get in front of people who have the problem that you're actually solving. And they are the ones who are raising the hands to come um, consult you know, with you, whether you're actually you know, a good fit for them. Um, and that's the idea behind kind of building that audience. Um, could you uh, could you just shotgun a list for people who are who are unsure? What kind of marketing platforms are, are easy and accessible? I mean, there's quite a few free ones, but could you just list off a bunch of stuff real quick just for some people? Yeah, hundred um, percent. I mean, one of the key kind of types of marketing that we like to do and um, that we see a lot of results coming from uh, for is organic marketing. Um, perhaps you feared flywheel. Perhaps you feared organic marketing attraction methods. Essentially, what this is in comparison to paid advertisements is that you're putting out content, but you don't have to invest money into it. So that is a great place to begin with. And organic marketing can be really used on any social platform, whether that is Facebook, whether that is um, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube, all of these social platforms that are available, even TikTok, um, you can take advantage of. And the idea here is really to figure out kind of where your target market um, and your target audience hangs around in, follow those platforms and build your audience around that particular platform. So what, what do you think about, just because I get this question myself, mm -hmm. I'm never sure how to, how to answer it because I simply don't know enough, but um, what do you think about the paid ads on you know, Facebook and Instagram and YouTube? They, they charge you and they run it for a you know, mm -hmm. select number of people and such for a set number of money for a set number of days. What do you think about those? Are they effective or just a waste of your money? I think paid advertisements are definitely um, really effective. And I always say like every marketing method works but there's always a right time for everything. Um, with paid advertisements in general, I have always seen that, you know, they work perfect once you have a validated offer and a validated platform. And, you know, you're at the stage where you can really just pour in a dollar and get free back. You can kind of get yourself away from the business and you have system, systems in place to automate all the leads that come in. Um, for like, you know, in my company for clients that actually get started or are very, very early in their business with the amounts of clients that they're working with, 
um, we always first look at organic marketing, just because you don't have to invest a dime of your own money into the marketing side of things as compared to ads. So what tends to happen is that um, obviously a lot of people have an understanding of what advertisements is about and, you know, the potential of it. But if you go, you know, too early into it and, you know, you're throwing money, perhaps you're not um, yet sure, you know, what type of problem, you know, is the biggest one that you can solve in the market and whether your offer is validated, um, then you're just really wasting your money on the front end because there's certain things that have not been solved before. So I see advertise, paid advertisements more as a form of um, coming in kind of once you've already had several clients and you have enough cash flow to pour in money, reinvest back into your business and um, get leads back and you know build from there. What would you say? This is something I actually personally help my clients with. It's uh, it's just something I'm good at because I'm a creative individual. But what would you say is a good strategy for take? Because it seems like everyone has a great product. Oh, I shouldn't say everyone, but generally speaking, mm -hmm. most people have pretty good products, and there's absolutely a market for them. The problem is finding the market. So what's a, what do you think is a good way to actually go about, you know, finding your target market? Should you go out and do surveys, census, cold call? Should you just post things? What do you people think about this? What's a good way to actually go about finding who wants what you have? So, so just so I understand correctly, um, it's about figuring out wh where to find your market or whether they, you know, kind of, appreciate the problem most people already seem to have a product most people mm -hmm. seem to have something they feel is valuable but they do seem to have tendency actually selling it to people meaning they're having trouble finding their target market for their particular product so how would you they already have you know the problem fixed they have the solution but they can't mm -hmm. sell it that's a biggie so how would you say these people should go about first finding their said target market okay so um i mean there's different stages to it i would say if you're already at the point where um, you've got a validated offer um, and you know that you're solving a problem. Um, here, like the, like the one key thing that I was telling my clients when really, you know, figuring out what platform you want to follow um, for organic marketing is thinking about where your audience hangs around in. Um, and, you know, before you really dive into any type of marketing, you kind of want to sit down and what really helps is on a piece of paper, really think, okay, um, like what is my ideal client avatar? Um, you know, what are they like? Where do they hang around in? What do they do? And that's going to give you, you know, some really good ideas to kind of figure out where you can be active in to, you know, find these people, whether that is to find them to learn more about, um, about them, uh, what are the problems, you know, perhaps you can add on to your product, um, you know, figuring out where to hang out so that you can advertise to them and market to them. So, you know, that's the one key way I've really um, like to think about it. And put, put yourself in your client's shoes, basically think how your client thinks, go where they go, where would they, where would they congregate? Where could you market effectively online? What kind of a hundred percent? Yes. Or something? Yeah. Um, that's definitely a big one. And then you can even go a bit you know, uh, deeper into that and look at the direct ways or the direct things that they do, as well as the indirect things that they do. Um, for example, if, you know, you have, let's say, um, you're a mindset, like you're a mindset coach, and you know that your, you know, um, ideal client avatar obviously has these certain characteristics, an indirect thing that they may be doing is perhaps looking at uh, being part of a community where, they can just perform at a higher level. So now you can kind of look at these communities and track them down. Perhaps there are Facebook groups, perhaps there are communities or um, YouTube channels or you know Instagram pages. And through there, you can find um, segments and people in there that are in your in your client base. You know, I would just interject real quick. I know this mm -hmm. is really common sense to you, but and to me, but I'll say it as well to, to everyone listening about this, by the way. Yeah, you do have to do this, by the way. This is one of the steps. You have to do this. If it's uncomfortable for you, it is what it is, but you have to reach out to people. You have to speak to people. And if it's uncomfortable, do it more often until it's comfortable. The worst thing that's going to happen is someone's going to tell you no. 
that's that's the worst case scenario so what do you have to lose all you people telling me what do you got to do what do you got to do go talk to more people reach out to more people step outside your comfort zone think like your customer i mean this is common sense but it has to be said you know get uncomfortable speak to more people so something i actually struggled with personally when i was starting getting my company off the ground was i'm a very introverted person i didn't like going out and promoting myself you know uh sorry but uh let's let's hop onto the third pillar now so the third pillar be just a summary of the second one was was finding your marketing strategy the, and go ahead sorry you do it better than me um yeah by the way i was gonna say you know i really you know going back to what he mentioned i really love what he say about getting uncomfortable um because it's something that everybody really goes through and with time you realize the things that you thought were uncomfortable as you do them um at some point you look you look back at them and you're like i can't believe you know that was something that was holding me back because i could just manage it perfectly well um so conversations are a big one and everybody make sure you actually um just take action and um act now really but going back to the third pillar um and that is just kind of a sequential process from the offer right to the marketing what comes next is once you have a pipeline of leads is to master high ticket sales um and again i mean you know these are three key pillars that are so open and so broad, but I kind of boil them down to expertise and high ticket um, products that you put together. So everything that has to do with sales is um, understanding the ins and outs of how you can do and master um, high ticket sales um, for you know, expensive products. Now, would you speak on, uh, oh, sorry, would you speak mm -hmm. on pricing for a moment? It seems people struggle with pricing because they undervalue themselves or their services. And that's why they seem to have trouble developing these high ticket offers. Uh, would you mind speaking on that? Yes. Um, I mean, with pricing, and I'm sure one of the things, you know, you've always mentioned to your audience is um, being able to charge your worth because, you know, everybody is going to have different expertise and you like, once you look at the biggest problem that you can solve, obviously you're making a big change and um, you're creating a big impact in somebody's life. And for that, you're gonna be also, you know, be able to charge much higher. Now, a lot of the things that I've seen, you know, also my clients go through is they struggle to kind of justify um, the pricing side of things to their clients. Um, and a tip that I can give you guys and one thing that you can consider is looking Again, at the things that create the biggest impact for your clients and focusing on those. Um, and then once you are in the offer creation, that's why there is this um, sequential process is you want to create an offer so good that, um, you know, people feel stupid saying no. And that is actually, I'm not sure if you've heard of Alex Hermosi. Um, he, you know, he's a huge guy in the offer side of things space. And what he talks about is that, you know, like to be able to justify a high price, your offer has to be correctly in place. Um, and like you want to have components in there that are creating a big difference in your client's life, that are creating a big change. And thereby you can reflect that into the pricing side of things. That's good. Yeah. Uh, what would you say? Everybody's heard this term, but what would you say about mm -hmm. people developing their elevator speech? The same thing I always say is uh, it's just a short little, you know, marketing thing. But I always say just just practice until you're blue in the face. Try multiple things with multiple people. Find what sticks. Almost like a comedian playing to a crowd. You know, you got you to gotta find what sticks with it. People seem to have trouble summarizing their product or finding a quick, direct way to get somebody's attention mm -hmm. and speak on it. Any advice for that? Um. But, but like, what is that, the, the elevator speech? Yeah, is just your quick little summary. This is what I do. This is my product. This is how I help you. People that always oh, seem right. to have a hell of a lot of trouble developing that, so it actually catches their client's attention. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I get a good feel. Um, so one of the things that will really help you if, um, again, you're you know in the coaching space, perhaps you're doing consulting, is figuring out a headline for yourself, kind of like your own mission that you can boil down into a sentence and that you know you can essentially have it on your social profiles, um, whether that is on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, so that when people come across, they know exactly, okay, this is what he does. Um, this is exactly for who he or she does it and, and what timeline. 
Um, and that's what we call kind of your mission um, headline. Now, what you can do here is essentially um, really easily say, you know, I help um, this particular category of people to, um, you know, I help um, fitness trainers to 10x their business in 90 days using this particular method, right? So here we kind of pointed out who you're helping, um, how you're doing it, what are you going to do for them, the timeline, and your special mechanism that is unique to you. Um, great and, advice. and that's, great advice. yes, that's going to help you kind of put everything together. And for anybody who reads it and is in your target audience, right, and needs that, um, it's going to work much stronger. So I guess the, the next biggie, well, actually, before we get to the next biggie, mm -hmm. uh, would you mind just real quick giving me a synapse, a, a summary of those three pillars? And then I wanted to see if we can move on to actually getting your clients and then nurturing them and building your audience. 100%. Um, again, we've got offer marketing and sales. Um, with the offer side of things, um, one of the key, you know, I mean, there's really a lot that goes into it, but one of the key things that you want to look at is, um, again, what we covered, you know, focusing on the problem that you're solving, because that's going to be the biggest determinant of, um, you know, everything that follows with how, how well your marketing does, how well your, you know, sales is going to convert. Um, also kind of the delivery side of things, how are you going to be able to um, create the biggest change in people's lives? And um, so solving the problem is the one key thing that you want to look at. From there, you also want to figure out the way you're kind of going to structure your high ticket offer. Um, when we look into high ticket for the people that are perhaps um, doing client work, you know, based on a fixed pay or perhaps you're doing it per hourly, you know, we always look at creating an offer that you can charge perhaps, you know, three thousand dollars let's say on average for um and you want to figure out you know this is my timeline uh, this is my timeline and this is exactly what i'm going to be doing at each stage for my clients and you also kind of want to figure out you know your own pillars to your offer um that's going to be a big one which is going to help you on the marketing side of things it's going to help you with sales it's all kind of interlinked um that's the one big one that you know i would kind of boil offer down to Marketing is everything that has to do with, again, building your own audience, um, nurturing that audience, and um, through there, you know, be able to establish your authority and trust with the people um, that you've attracted. Now, one of the key, you know, methods that you can look at, and obviously we talked about, you know, there's so many out there and all of them work. There's a time for all of them. Um, and, but the key thing is being consistent. And the one that I find really effective and you guys should consider if you haven't yet is organic marketing. And high ticket sales um, is again, you know, this, you know, one of the key things that you want to have in place is a system to qualify the people just to make sure that the people that do, you know, book in the calls um, to come speak with you are qualified um, to, you know, work with what you're doing with your expertise. Um, this can be in many things, qualified on perhaps on a financial level, right, to commit with you financially, but as well as someone who's qualified in terms of, you know, being on the same page as you, having the same values. Um, because whenever you work with someone, obviously, I get, you know, I would say the most important thing is that besides them being committed in actually making it work, is that you're also um, going to be, in, you know, going to enjoy working with them. So making sure that you're on the same page um will be a big one here very nice yeah um uh, thank you and um so let's let's get on to now that you got your product you got your everything's working you got your funnel you got your pipeline your clients are coming to you you got your high ticket everything's working great now you got a client base you're slowly building it you got an audience so what's next what's the next step here um Right. So once you figure out, you know, the platform where your audience hangs around in and you're putting out content um, from here is just a game of really doubling down um, and, you know, kind of making that bigger throughout. So it's it's never like your audience building stage completes, but it's something you're going to be doing throughout. Um, but what you're doing with building your audience and putting out that content is that, like we talked about, you're essentially 
um, establishing your expertise and the authority that you have, right, in the market, and you're also building trust with the people. Um, the next real like step from here is nurturing the people, um, and that's going to come again with the content that you put out because you kind of want to look at building your audience as um, you know like a big circle, and now you're going to be connected with people. Um, I mean, your target audience is going to be spread around the whole web and people that are going to be in your audience is essentially going to be the followers that you have on Instagram. Perhaps it's going to be the subscribers that you have on YouTube or the people that you're friends with on Facebook or the connections that you have on LinkedIn, because once they are in your audience, they will always be seeing the content that you put out, right? So the next content that you put out is going to become important to, you know, showcase um, and kind of show off your expertise, but also, you know, get them to resonate with you. Um, and once you're doing that, you know, like one of the things I always um, like to say is that you can have the biggest audience in the world, right? You can have the most amount of Instagram followers, but if you're not really um, doing call to actions or if you're not telling your audience, you know, what your offer really is and what you can do for them, obviously, you know, you're never going to have prospects um, knowing that you can actually help them. So the next step here is to make them aware that, you know, you, you're here to help them um, and you have something to offer. And what's, what that is going to do for you, for the people that, that have been consuming your content, um, they've been seeing what you do and they know they really like you and they know that they can be using and could need your expertise. Um, when that time comes, you know, that will reflect back into, let's say, the engagement that they gave you, perhaps they reach out to you and ask you for, you know, direct help. Um, and that gives you an opportunity then to assess whether you can help them. Um, but also, most importantly, you know, give you an opportunity to serve them um, with, you know, onboarding them as a client if they're a good fit. I just wanted to, to interject mm -hmm. and say also you should always listen to them too. So if they're if they're commenting on certain things and not on other things, and if they're interacting with some things and not with other things, then you, you should probably yes. pay attention to that. You know, that's I mean just obvious, but just so you guys are aware. And uh, another thing I wanted to ask about is these calls to action. Uh, people seem to have trouble mm -hmm. with that as well. They they think something I myself struggled with as well. I think is uh, I didn't want to like. Um, I don't, I guess, over promote myself. I didn't want to saturate myself. I didn't want to seem like I was being pushy. So what would you advise for the, the calls to actions um, kind of, I guess, balanced with not over saturating with yourself, you know? Yes. Great question. Um, I mean, that's one of the things that comes with call to actions and what I like to follow as well is that you have to be aware of not, like you mentioned, oversaturating um kind of the use of that because when you oversaturate it um people just are not responding too well to it anymore so keeping that balance becomes really important um now one of the things that i can advise on and that works really well is um segmenting the you know the platforms that you're active in um and the way you use it um to put this into practical perspective, um, let's say, you know, whenever you put out a piece of content, perhaps it's a training video on YouTube, um, perhaps you're doing that inside your own Facebook group, you can put a call to action when you know um, this is a topic that has been, you know, really um, important to your audience. And, you know, this has been a topic that has gotten a lot of um, engagement. So perhaps you're doing a workshop or perhaps you're doing a boot camp um, that goes over, you know, two days, three days, or maybe it's only been a day, um, but it's been really intensive. And, you know, you've given the opportunity to the people that are actually following your stuff to really connect with you, um, you know, understand and see your expertise and to actually help them with what you do. A call to action in that situation becomes really powerful because now you've been actually nurturing um, your, um, audience, you know, while they've been consuming, you know, your expertise, your content, um, and doing a call to action then will become really much more powerful. And that's why it's important that you don't want to be doing call to actions, let's say, um, at every moment everywhere, because then it just doesn't feel as powerful. Um, so that's one tip I can give you. Another um, another tip that I can say is 
again, keeping the call to actions that you have exclusive, but when you do make them, make them big. And what that does is that, you know, let's say perhaps, you know, I myself, I don't do too many call to actions, but you know, when I do them, people know um, that, you know, I'm not doing them much. So when you combine that with a limited amount of um, perhaps spots that you have available, you know, scarcity with that limiting factor that, you know, if you're doing the call to actions, again, just supercharges everything and makes it much more powerful. So one of the things that you can consider is um, perhaps in your own business, you can only take, let's say, three clients, four clients, uh, high ticket clients a month, or maybe, you know, let's just say, you know, in 30 days. So what you can say is um, you can form your call to action, everything that goes into it, and say you only have four seats available because you can only take on four people. Now that scarcity combined with the call to action becomes um, so much more powerful to the person who sees it. And, you know, when you can let people know that, you know, once you fill up these four spots, um, they're not available till perhaps next month. Now the next month, when it comes to you doing the call to action, the people that didn't have the chance of, you know, signing up back then are going to be, you know, just lined up, ready to go. Um, oh, and that's great, another great thing. Advice. I like that. Thank you. Great advice. So keep going. I'm sorry. I like that. Good thinking. Yes. Um, I would say these are the two biggest the ones biggest. that you can. Yeah. What do you think about uh, Instagram shout outs? I, I, again, I don't really know how to comment mm -hmm. on this. It seems like a great idea to me. I don't have a problem with it. People ask me what I think. I say, you know, sure. If it works, what do you think about it? So shout outs to promote your business. Yes. Um, actually, I have never done um, an Instagram shout out myself um, in that sense. So I could not tell you. Um, it's something that I've been looking at, but obviously there is a lot that goes um, into it. And I mean, I'm sure it works. And what's going to be important again here is figuring out, you know, on what pages your target audience hangs around in. Um, you know, there's a lot to consider. You'll have to consider at the engagement rates. Um, also, you know, really the quality of the people that follow. Um, but I don't have, you know, uh, the experience to actually, you know, tell you if it um, no, worked or not. I was just curious your thoughts. Don't worry, nobody can know everything. Jesus, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? Well, actually, no, but, take that back. Yeah, but but I think it's definitely something that you can explore, right? Um, I always say with paid advertisements, once you have the cash flow, same like. Um, running paid ads on Facebook and um, perhaps running paid ads on Instagram or on YouTube. Um, if you have the cash flow, it's good. Same with shout outs because it's a forum where you have to have the capital up front. Um, and the way um, I've seen that work is what you're doing is you're, again buying eyeballs to build your audience. Um, and one of the important things that, you know, while I've been considering of doing that is when you do do a shout out, you know, you have to have the systems in place to be able, you have to have the contents in place to be able to then nurture your audience. So if you're not, you know, if you're doing a shout out and, you, and you're not active, obviously that's going to um, not be beneficial for your business or at least for the people that you can um, help because they're not, not going to be aware. Yeah, it's super important. You have to keep putting up the good quality content. And I mean, if you're not at that level yet, just, just don't try unless you're able to continuously put out good quality content. A big one, I always say, you, you've probably heard this yourself, but I mean, would you buy your product? Because if you wouldn't buy yes. your product, who the, who yes. the hell else is going to buy your product? You know, yes, you that, that is clear. huge. Yeah. Uh, but why don't uh, actually, I think we got to wrap it up here. Would you mind uh, telling everybody, please, how they can reach you and um, anything else you feel like mentioning real quick? Um. Yes. Um, I mean, for one, um, if you guys have any questions, um, make sure to drop them down below. You know, if this is going to be posted, uh, I'm not sure on YouTube, Facebook, but if, if you have any questions, drop them down below and we will get back to you. And um, if you want to directly, you know, reach out to me, um, like I mentioned, my company is called Earn More, Impact More. That is also the name of my community. I have a Facebook group. Um, you know, on Earn More, Impact More, where I have a mini course and I have free trainings that I put out on these three pillars of marketing and sales. Um, so feel free to check it out and join there. Um, I would say that is the easiest way to just be in touch together.
Uh, guys, I just want to say I, I ran in Diego uh, recently and I had a conversation with him and I was so thrilled with the conversation and just what an empathetic and nice and helpful guy he was. I immediately invited him on the podcast so he could share his knowledge with everybody. He's already helped me quite a bit. I'm looking forward to probably watching this again twice and taking some notes myself. And uh, guys, just a reminder, everybody, if you like these podcasts and you're enjoying the content, drop a comment below. You know, if you're trying to networking, do that in the comments below too. I don't care. And uh, guys, just remember, like, share, and subscribe. It's not a big deal to you. It is a big deal to me and Diego. It makes a big difference to us. So check out our channels. Check out our content. You know, we're just here to help you. We're here to make everybody's lives better. We are all in this together. Nobody gets out alive and we're all just trying to live our best life. So let's all help each other out, everybody. And again, just make sure you treat yourself like somebody that you love and care about and everything suddenly becomes really easy. So Diego, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Hey, thank it. you, Castle. It's been and a I'll pleasure. about having you back on again soon, I hope. <laughs> okay, man. Thank you so much. All right, later.